In this video, I dive into the testing performed while reviewing the Blackview DR900X two-channel dash camera that I have as a separate video on my channel. I check out the battery protection features such as the parking mode cutoff timer, the low voltage cutoff feature, and then I go through some of the modifications I made to the three-wire hard wiring harness to extend its length and add that ever-elusive power-off switch that is never included in the camera, but I added to my wiring harness. So, let's get into it! This video is divided into several chapters. I've listed each chapter with a time index for that chapter. If there's a chapter that interests you, jump to that time index. Or you can expand the description section of this video and use the clickable link for that video chapter. Now, let's get into the video. I have the firmware settings for battery protection enabled and I'm gonna be testing the low voltage cutoff, which I have set to 12 volts. And I'm gonna be putting the camera into parking mode here with my simulated ignition switch and my fuse box there. And it'll go into parking mode just about now. So with it in parking mode, I'm gonna step the voltage down. I'm starting at 12.25 volts. I'm gonna give it about a minute and a half at each voltage level based on some previous testing I did with other third-party voltage cutoff features for other dash cameras. And I'll find that that's actually a bit excessive for this particular one when we get to the end here. But I wanna make sure it has sufficient time to see that it's a stabilized voltage drop because if you have small dropouts and it comes back up, it won't. you don't want it cutting off the camera too soon. But as we get close here, you can see that it's drawing between 400 and 430, 450 milliamps with the front, rear, and CM100 LTE device connected to it. And we're about to get to the voltage level where it's going to cut off here at 12.16. And we'll look at the lights on the camera and we'll see that they'll begin flashing to show that it's about to power down here. And there's the indication it's going to power down. And in just a moment, we'll hear it announcing the fact that it's powering down, and then we'll see the amp draw drop to near zero. So this does prove that the voltage cutoff feature does work a little bit higher than expected, though. An additional battery protection feature included with the DR900X camera is the ability to define a parking mode cutoff timer. You have the option of off, 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, or 48. I'm changing the setting from off to 6 hours, and Saving that firmware setting change will cause the camera to reboot. I'll get the camera rebooted and place it into parking mode by turning off my simulated ignition switch. And again, that does bring up the point you do need to be using the three-wire hard wiring harness powering the camera to have this feature actually functional in the camera. And right as we get at the six hour point, it cuts off the power to the camera and shuts it down. So if you wish to predetermine the length of recording in parking mode, you can take advantage of this feature to make sure that you only have the battery draw from your camera last for a specific period of time. So as we approach the six hour point, you'll see the lights flash on the camera and then on the power supply, the amp draw will drop to zero and we completed the test. In this section, I'll be going through my three-wire hard wiring configuration for the DR900X two-channel dash camera. This is the front, the rear camera, and then I have the CM100 LTE connectivity module for North America. So in my vehicle, I have a dash cam battery pack, the battery for the vehicle, and the main fuse box for the vehicle on the interior side of it in the trunk. So because of that, it's located at the extreme rear of the vehicle and I needed an extra length of cable to reach that from the front of the vehicle. The included three wire cable was insufficient in length. And because of that, if, even if I were just to hardwire it to the fuse box here that I have on my secondary camera view, I would need an extra cable run. So I de decided to try to find a way to do that. I did find, since I do have a dash cam battery pack, and that is my ultimate configuration here that, that I'm demonstrating today, I wanted to find a cable that Blackview does offer on their website to plug directly into the dash cam battery pack. And I tried to order it from their website, but it stated that there were no available shipping options for my location. And that's kind of strange because I'm in Northern California. I decided to proceed by buying the necessary connectors myself, these Molex connectors and the terminal pins. I have the information down in the description section if you are interested in that information. And I bought ferrite filters and so this is the end section that normally is part of the three-wire harness that's included in the dash cam battery pack box. 
and the, the inline fuses for that. And I cut it here, added the six foot extension to it. Then this part goes up to the front of the vehicle and I made an additional modification on the front of the cable. And so I cut it here, used the Molux connectors again to insert the switch assembly and then another ferrite filter. And then this pigtail runs out to the camera that you normally mount on the front windshield. So again, this is my simulated fuse. This fuse box is my simulated dash cam battery pack. And I have my power supplier acting as the car's power charging system and battery. So I'm gonna turn it on to provide power. It's configured at 12.6 volts, so 2.75 amps max. It should take less than half an amp or 500 milliamps to power this whole thing at normal operating power. So I've begun sending power to the system. I have my simulated ignition switch in the on position and I have my extra switch here turned on. So it's going through its normal boot up as far as the camera it doesn't see any difference here. It's just getting its power accessory and the constant power coming from this set of cables and switch set coming up to the camera. Now we're about to boot up with the audio. So we've gotten the audio about booting. And now we're in normal recording mode. It'll start the Wi-Fi network next and also initiate the LTE connection through the connectivity module. And it'll state that a cloud connector in, in just a moment, hopefully. And what we have here, the white shows the Wi-Fi is on at this point. And the firmware setting to auto turn off Wi-Fi is ignored in this configuration. So if you need to turn off the Wi-Fi, you have to do it manually with the button. So if you have the, so we're connected to the cloud. So if you have it set up to do an auto reboot in the middle of the night, you will get the Wi-Fi network turned on again. So keep that in mind. There's no way to turn off the Wi-Fi network by default when it first boots. So this will always be on unless you manually turn it off, just as a side note. So with this, we're, the engine's running, we're driving off to somewhere, we've arrived at our destination. Now the camera has two parking mode detection modes. One with three wire configuration that we have here it has instantaneous parking mode detection by the fact that the accessory power will be removed when I turn off the ignition. And then the second one is the original feature that's been in most of the cameras or all the Blackview cameras uh, that support parking mode, that it will wait for five minutes of no motion and then it will go into parking mode. So both options are still viable. If you're using the power port adapter that doesn't have the switch power like this, it will still work in parking mode after the five minute inactivity period. So. With my three wire configuration, I'm turning off the engine by with my ignition switch over here, parking mode. So we've gone into parking mode and I'm at this first destination. I do whatever I'm doing there and I come back out to the vehicle and I go ahead and start it back up. And we should come out of parking mode immediately. So parking mode is off. We're in normal recording mode again. We go off to wherever we're going and then eventually go through that cycle repeatedly for however many destinations you have on, on that trip. And then I arrive back home. So I drive into the garage and it's like, I don't want to deplete the battery pack charge level or if I were connected to the fuse panel, the car's battery. So there was never a way to turn this off other than pulling the connector at the end of the camera, which is kind of difficult over time. I mean, over time, this might actually start wearing the connector out and get it where it might be loose. Just, it's not a great way to powering down the camera. It's a way to do it, but it's not the right way to do it. Most other cameras that I've reviewed have, if not all other cameras that uh, have an option of pressing a button. The Thinkware camera that I have, my F800 Pro, all the Viafo cameras and the Blue Sky C B4K all have a way of turning off the camera by pressing a button in some manner. This does not. So to simulate that, I've added the switch into the circuit and I've arrived home and I, I'm turning, I can either turn off the ignition first. Let's do that. It'll go into parking mode. It doesn't really matter which order I do this. Because there is a capacitor inside the camera, it will gracefully shut it down when it loses power. And now I'll turn that switch off. and it powers down the camera. So this way I can, I can conserve the battery charge level in my dash cam battery pack or the car's battery, depending on how it's wired on this end of it. I, like I said, wanted to take advantage of the dash cam battery pack that I have in the vehicle already. And this allows me to do that, the three wire configuration. And if you were to do it with a fuse tap configuration, the same thing would be true. You'd be conserving the car's battery if you really don't need it while parked in your garage for extended periods of time, like overnight or over the weekend. 
So that's my overview of my three wire hard wiring conf configuration for my vehicle and the DR900X two channel dash cameras. I hope you found the testing of the Blackview X series battery protection features to be informative, as well as the modifications I made to the three wire hard wiring harness. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos just like this one to the channel. Look in the description section of this video for links to the full review of the Blackview DR900X two channel dash camera, as well as the Blackview Cloud CM100 LTE 4G LTE connectivity module. Look for other links if you want to support the channel and thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one.